Star Wars Outlaws, the game that's not even gonna sell 2 million copies. At this point, it's probably even a reach to say that it's gonna sell a million and a half copies. Imagine, the Star Wars IP is right there at your fingertips. And instead of making literally multiple hundreds of millions, because the Star Wars fans are desperate for a good show, series, game, movie to watch or play, you decided you're gonna go just mega woke. I put in as many hours as I could into Star Wars Outlaws, even stopping a whole bunch of times before going back to it to say, why don't I give it another shot? Mainly to hang out with the community and just kind of get a consensus on this game overall and really play it through because I am a real believer in if you're going to critique something or give a review on something, you have to at least watch it or play it in entirety to really... I think this is false. I, I think Theory is just absolutely coping and he just desperately wanted for something Star Wars to not suck. And so he tried to play the game multiple times. But, you know, you can't sprinkle sprinkles on a shit and it magically becomes not shit. It's still a shit. It just has sprinkles on it. Really know what you're talking about and not just be a influenced person that is just hating on something or loving something blindly and so i really try to do my due diligence to really watch something all the way through and then give my take on it and give my opinion and i did my best with outlaws i really did as you can see you know I, there's so many streams that i did that are popping up on the screen right now and you can see the hours that i put into this game and while i had a great time with the community that's just hanging out with the subscribers the game overall was probably one of the worst what is this strange bluish blackish spot i thought it's my monitor bugging out but no it's it's dead games i've ever played in my life let's start at the very beginning okay the game is three days early as like a early access pass it was 160 dollars canadian which i thought was okay you get to play early you get to make content about it and hang out oh no there's no defense for this uh get to play the game three days early it's 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 just the scam it's just the scam out with your friends like subscribers and whatever so the justification is there sweet it's a new star wars game i'm thinking it's gonna be hot whatever i wasn't too excited about it anyway well if you're gonna stream it then that is justification getting it early but as a consumer <laughs> paying like 40 60 bucks extra for three games three days early access hell no ways but i went into it with kind of no expectations and to just see what it's all about 160 bucks later the game had lies he wanted it to be good he really probably wanted it to be good as so many bugs right off the bat not only am i clipping through walls and floors and they caught me i'm sorry master ah not again get out of here, get out of here. There we go. Yay. Nice. What? What the fuck, man? Nice. $160. But the AI of the actual enemies are probably negative IQ. Like, I think they're like the most... They're not even NPCs. That They're, they're like brain-dead PCs. I, I don't even know what to call them. You know what's the craziest part about this? This whole game is effectively made off of the backbone of... That's just great. The engine that they use. So, they have everything already there. They have the stealth mechanics, they have the takedown mechanics, they have the every pretty much mechanic that you can imagine is already there. But, for some magical stupid reason, it's not working. And the reason for that is because Ubisoft doesn't have a single competent person in their employment any, a, anymore. 90% women run, boys. Not even a meme. Go go look up Ubisoft staff. staff. Be surprised. And no, it's not just the HR department or whatever. It's, a lit, it, it's, it's just over. Because, well, just check this out. Hello. Hello. I'm going to kick your ass now. Hi. I mean, that's legit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I am. <laughs> this is freaking dumbest AI I've ever seen. Oh, God. So overall, this game for me, it was a ton of cut and paste. So when I was a kid, my parents put me into a computer school and we learned a ton of different things at this school for years. I ended up kind of excelling and then starting, they hired me to teach at the age of 11, and I was full-on teaching courses at this computer camp. 
I did not even know this. Cool. School to adults, which was great. One of the courses they really taught us on was gaming and developing games. And this was back in the 90s. So you can imagine like a kind of like a workshop for games, at, especially at that level for beginners, was like, you know, very beginner level, like a Zelda kind of thing or whatever. I believe what they did with this game was they created a whole bunch of assets and programmed them to function. You know, like the door, the vent opening, uh, climbing on the walls, climbing on the grates, the ladders, and responses to different sort of interactions within the world and they did not make any different changes whatsoever at all. The only things that they did was that they changed the skin and look of everything. Otherwise, every level is pretty much the same. Every level operates the same. It has the same sort of feel where it just maybe has a little bit of a different skin or lighting or shading. Yeah, that's the problem with the uh, Ubi slop nowadays. That's that's just what they do. They just reskin a thing and shiv it out. And it's even buggier than the last thing that's literally a copy-paste of the previous thing. It just doesn't work. But it's essentially just plug and play. Like, like copy-paste. They literally copy-pasted everything in every different level from the level before it. And... I think it is like the most lazy made game I have ever come across. How this was 300 million. Oh, you poor dear summer child. <laughs> he has he has not interacted with a couple of other great companies. In that case, if this is the peak of bad. In dollars or whatever, 200, 300 million dollars blows my mind as well. But when you have the Acolyte costing just about 300 million. I still, by the way, can't literally get over the goddamn, uh, goddamn fact that these guys are wearing armor. And she just skull bashes them into oblivion, okay? She's sending them into the Shadow Realm. Why even use a blaster at this point, okay? It's probably weaker than your Hulk hands. For 200, 300 million dollars. Blows my mind as well, but when you have the Acolyte costing just about 300 million, yeah, it's really no surprise at this point with them. So the game overall is your, uh... Hashtag renew the Acolyte season two. The bigots cannot win, okay? We need to stand up for what we think is right, and that is making Disney go even more in depth with making the Acolyte Season 2, and us having a hilarious time making fun of it at how bad it is. God, the Acolyte was shit. Kind of like a bounty hunter named K Vess, and you have to- She's actually a part of the underground. She's, she's like a big deal, but then she's not a big deal, and no one knows about her, even though she's supposed to be really, really famous and shit. It just it just makes sense. Don't worry about it. Get in with different cartels, different crime syndicates. You can be in with the Huts, the Pike Syndicate. Yeah, you can get job of the Hut to save you from uh, the Empire because of reasons. <laughs> ah. Kits, the Crimson Dawn, whatever, so on and so forth. Through it all, it's literally every level is the same thing where you have an objective to get some information or something from a computer or get a key. Yeah, what the hell is this? You see it, right? This. See? It, it, it's not a monitor. It's... What the hell? E or whatever it might be from one of these crime syndicates. And you have to crawl your way through. It's all stealth. And uh, retrieve the objective and then crawl your way back. Try not to get caught or seen. And then bring it back to... Uh, whoever you're you're hired well thank god the empire hasn't figured out the camera technology just yet whoever hired you scout drones fuck that and you do this enough times and you eventually get in with different crime syndicates and that like ups your level of status with them so you can get into like their areas that are more confidential yes and then you can betray them and they're gonna be like boop, 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 boop. well not a big deal uh, how about you fetch me that piece of uh, wood right there? Oh, you did? Well, we love you again. It's the most bland system that honestly should not even exist. Or, you know, group members or what, clan members or whatever it is uh, that are allowed in there. And this sort of opens up other tasks within the game, but the tasks are literally the same. Like, it's the exact same thing all the way through. And in order to get from one place to another, if you're not within the same freaking little city that is, like, super confined, then you're essentially using a speeder bike that you have to upgrade like crazy throughout the whole game, and the upgrades really aren't that special at all. To go from probably one mile an hour to maybe five miles an hour at most with a boost, maybe you're getting up to, like, 
Okay, if you're a game developer, let me explain when you have automatically failed at a transportation vehicle that you ride yourself. It's very simple. If you ride the vehicle and you think adding a boost is a smart idea, that means that the default speed of the vehicle should be like the boost, well, it should be the exact same as the boost is activated. Yeah, if you ever put in a boost into your game because the traveling needs to be faster or more interesting, that means that traveling should always be with the boost automatically on and the boost should not exist. There you go. And there you go. Hour at most with a Also the 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 speeder shit is hilarious. Uh this is what uh Mauler was talking about and he uh, he found this. So, turns out, turns out the wildlife that is invulnerable in this game is not coded into the enemy AI. So if you're in a situation where wildlife is all around you, the enemy NPCs that are after you are going to completely ignore its existence and just ram into it and die. Because reasons. Yeah, that's fun. Hour at most with a boost, maybe you're getting up to like 7 to 10 miles an hour while you're traveling on this thing. And it's really underwhelming. Like, it just does not feel like a thrill at all when you're on the speeder bike. Hell yeah. It should. Or when you're playing the game. You can upgrade your, your blasters, but that also takes a lot of time. You got to, like, find different components and stuff. And that, in its of itself, is not worth it. Is super annoying. So annoying and basic and redundant that the devs actually had a turn off option to bypass the ridiculousness of searching through crate boxes, which is literally the same copy paste bullshit that they had throughout the whole game where you take a lock pick and you have to decipher the code you gotta hit the right trigger at those inter time intervals dee, dee, dee. and then you get to open the crate sounds fun maybe the first you know 40 times you do it and then the other 10,000 times you have to do it every time you want to open something yeah that feels already like a stretch honestly it's really annoying and really redundant and just not clever or anything at all like skyrim for example i felt like that was at least very skill based like there was a lot every every lock was kind of different and there were so many variables to it it wasn't just like dee -dee 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 -dee. not even that there's like three beeps you know what's my favorite part about skyrim skyrim has the same exact system as uh fallout and you know what's funny people don't understand how lock picking works in skyrim and fallout so you can get your uh, lock picking level up, and from zero you can do uh, easy. I, I don't even remember this. It's been a while since I have played Fallout, but you know, at fifty you can do medium difficulty locks, and at a hundred you can do very difficult locks. People think that improving your lock skill makes it easier to unlock all uh you know things no 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 improving your lock skill doesn't make it actually easier to unlock with lock picking one an easy container is going to be the same difficulty as a lock uh lock picking skill 100 container the difference is there are just thresholds that you reach <laughs> Where, uh, where you can just start doing the medium uh, medium difficulty and the uh, very hard difficulty lockpicks. That's it. It doesn't actually increase uh, how easy it's going to be for you to get it right. It just allows you access to the level of lockpicking, which is hilarious. It was kind of different, and there were so many variables to it. It wasn't just like... Dee -dee 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 -dee. Deed, deed. Not even that. There's like three beeps, and then you have to figure it out. The game is extremely basic. It was something that was put together half assedly I feel like there were probably so many problems that made this thing. It's almost like a woman who didn't care about Star Wars but political agendas made this. Hmm, interesting. Cost three hundred million dollars. The graphics. I'm pretty sure my PS3 had Jesus. the same graphics. I didn't even have a PS3, so my GameCube had the same graphics as this, if not maybe even a little bit better. And I'm running this on a PC that is maxed out next level PC. So it, it, there's no reason why the game should look as shitty as it does. And uh, whether it's on console or PC, you see how the graphics are just unbelievably not of our time. They are like maybe 10 years ago. He, he needs to play Bethesda games, okay? He, <laughs> he, he needs to play Bethesda games and figure out the way that it gets worse. Go at earliest. So I think the game 
you know, maybe they had some intention to create some sort of a open world game and they really advertised it as such. But as a Star Wars game, it did not sell. It did not feel like it sold to me. It did not feel like a Star Wars. This is literally probably going to be roughly 250 million down the drain for Ubisoft. Yeah, I'm not joking. Wars game. It felt like you are a chick bounty hunter on not even a bounty hunter, like like a scoundrel that's just doing these medial jobs from henchmen and different cartel bosses that are telling you to go and retrieve. Yeah, and for what reason? The fuck do I know? Some rando hobo reason, I guess this no there's no problem honestly in a game being a scoundrel type doing just mediocre jobs for uh for someone it could get lame and it probably is going to get lame faster than other things but the reality is not necessarily bad right it's but it's the fact that there's don't even understand why you're honestly doing anything that you're doing in this game it just fucking doesn't make really sense object and then you have to stealth your way back by stealth your way back i literally mean you like crouch and hide your way back but through the same copy pasted environments as every other freaking level so whether you're trying to like jump on a pole and then jump to another pole and then climb a little bit and then crouch 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 or go through an air vent and crouch through that and get like a doom perspective and then you get get out of the air vent wait till the guy goes past and then you get out again so boring so redundant not fun very 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 boring then the other thing was the npc characters i mean you could literally crouch next to one and they wouldn't even notice that you're there you could literally in a blaster fire of frenzy against 10 other stormtroopers and officers and imperials you could literally run your way through there and just haymaker beat the shit out of everybody and then you'll be fine now for those of you who do not know this is not no but exaggeration actually the way that he's presenting this if anything this is an under exaggeration how absolutely horrid this is okay listen if you're being chased by two billion stormtroopers and you find a brush that's this big and you can't even fit in it, congratulations. They will never find you. You just vanished into thin air. Use a couple stim packs and you're good. I mean, yeah, that's fun and all, but it, it's really not. All of that combined, I really didn't like the game. I thought it was a super big waste of time, waste of money on my end, and also for uh, Disney, who hired Ubisoft. I don't know who's to blame here. I don't know if Ubisoft has the poor vision. I don't know if they cut corners on things. I don't know if Disney just wanted to rush this thing out, and Ubisoft's like... Oh, no, Ubisoft just incompetent. Sure, Disney is also incompetent, but the reality is Ubisoft's just trash, okay? It, give them three more years, the game would not look even in the slightest bit different, probably. It's not ready, and they're like, get it out because we need our quarterly earnings. I have no idea. You, you got to be on the inside to know that kind of shit. But also Vader's voice, I didn't even make it to that part. I, I really tried. I tried for over a month now to make it to that part, and I just don't care anymore to play the game. I just wanted to hang out with you guys. But beyond that... Oh, it... yeah, the thing about Vader's voice is it's horrible. It doesn't sound at all like him. Even though it's supposed to be the same dude who did the voice in other games, that it's fine. But in this game, it's just someone took the uh, someone took the, uh, the guy's voice, and they completely fucked it up in mixing or uh, editing or whatever you want to call it, and it doesn't sound like Vader in the slightest. This is not even a Seven uh, Eleven Vader voice, okay? This is a knockoff dollar store uh, Vader voice. It was a snooze fest of a game. Vader's voice was absolutely abhorrent. It would, was is not like Jedi Survivor or Jedi Fallen Order, where Respawn did a fantastic job at actually you know, giving a crap about the game and caring about the game. Whereas this one was the same voice actor, apparently from what you guys were saying, the same voice actor, but the finishing was completely different. Two studios, you can see how it's so different. And Vader's voice, you know, these things matter, man. It's Darth Vader. It's his voice. James Earl Jones made a living out of his voice. Sure. It's not even the fact that it honestly matters. It's just the pure fact that if you can't even take five fucking minutes of your time to get even this little properly? What the hell else are you not going to do correct? Like, what, what what, can you even do correct at that point, you have to ask? On screen too. But his voice, Mufasa, Darth Vader, 
this is what he is most known for. And I feel like you have to nail that. Especially when you're, you have access to the studio, you have access to James Earl Jones's AI voice that he gave you a permission for. What is this? You know, like what, like what, like, sure, this is the voice actor, but it's the same voice actor from Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor, which was phenomenal because they did the post editing properly, right? The post processing, the sound engineering of Vader's voice was done great. It wasn't done great in this one. I don't know what they did. It sounded like a kid talking through some... Yeah, this is what, what we are hearing about this. Okay, not the only one who randomly read it on Twitter, I see. Sort of a cone. You know how when we were kids, you, I would, you would take the toilet paper roll or the bounty roll, and you'd talk into it in a fan? Luke, I am your father. Yeah, and so really it was like, no, I am your father. But you know what I'm saying? When you're a kid, it's like you're just trying to sound like Vader. And it just, uh, the game just was a waste of time. Waste of time, waste of money. I hope that going forwards, they can really do better. And uh, I hope that they make some actual stuff. That's your father thing. I'm still convinced it's a Mandela thing. Star Wars projects that are worth $300 million. I'll tell you what. I think that we're all waiting for Star Wars Eclipse. I think we're also all waiting for an open world bounty hunter. What be Star Wars Eclipse? Game where you can choose your character. Oh, no, that you is... can choose who you want to play as. Male, female, alien. What do you want? You can choose your suit. Violex Stripper, obviously. Honestly, there's no other choice even here. I mean, it's not even close. Dude, you can customize your character. This is where fans fall in love with stuff. Customization. I mean, we're all different, right? So you, when you're playing a video game, it's very important. And if stripper is not a job opportunity, my God, I will make it. To feel very connected to the character, and you can do that either through story or also by making the character kind of look like you, like build your own character, make it the features how you want, customize it. It's like your car, pimp my ride, make it how you want. It's the same thing. So I think that there's a, a very easy learning curve for these game developers. Just look at Fallen Order, look at Jedi Survivor, phenomenal games, fantastic games that did a great job. They made so much money and yet this game failed big time. Apparently now I'm seeing they only did a million copies sold, which I mean, on a $160 price tag, they're making bank, but still, they didn't even break half even, because that's Canadian. So what is that in American dollars? It's like 120, 130 bucks, 129, something like that. US. Yeah, pretty much, completely not worth the price. Anyway, that was Star Wars Theory, very cool. Anyway, this is Kuzer Sinsen, bye-bye.